Hey, thank you for watching. This is Ken with the 3D Mojo channel, and today we're going to work, work on our Y axis. Today I want to see if we can uh, get this tweaked a little bit better, um, change out a few things like these idler pulleys, and put geared ones on there and get rid of their bearings. We're going to also put on one of these uh, NEMA 17 motor insulators, and I'm also uh, changing the wheels to the polycarbonate wheels because these black ones here have so many little dents in them that every time this rolls back and forth it makes three little jumps in it. Uh, it gets kind of irritating so it's just time to get rid of that. So first things first, make sure you disconnect your stop switch, your uh, motor in the back, you'll remove the two screws back here from the frame and the two ones here from the frame. Then take these from your uh, bed that you adjust and just spin them all the way out and remove the spring and do that for all four of them and then lift it up gently and what I recommend that you do is that you actually put this one back on because some of us don't have a nice quick disconnect here uh, just like they said mine's supposed to but apparently it, they soldered this one so I have a feeling everything is not that consistent with uh, what I see in some of the reviews so again just remove all of these for now uh, they're not that important and just put them aside. So um, one of the first things I need to stress is that anytime you're going to be taking your wheels off you have two options. One is to um, bevel the edges of this extruder. Uh, one option is to bevel the edges of the extrusion so that you don't damage your wheels. That's why I have the polycarbonate wheels on mine. Every time I would take this off and put them back on, I would get more nicks in my black wheels. So um, if you have the black wheels currently, I'd recommend that you actually take off one side. Uh, it's probably easiest if you just take off the one with the um, two standard uh, bolts that go through and leave one of the eccentric ones here. Um, just remove them. I'm not going to do that today only because I've already replaced these wheels and I'm sure everybody knows how to switch a wheel out. I mean it's not that hard. So um, these are done and this is much smoother but I need to readjust these because uh, I will be removing this but since I've loosened up the concentric nuts uh, once I remove this end piece I'll be able to gently slide it off the end of mine without damaging the wheels. I also took a silver sharpie and marked a point here and here because several times I've put this on the incorrect direction. So um, don't need a whole lot of tools, uh, seven millimeter and an eight millimeter uh, open or closed in wrench. Um, you'll need your um, next to the largest, uh, actually that's not next to the largest. Yeah, it is next to the largest Allen key. And the uh, largest Allen key is only gonna be used as a uh, tensioning device and you'll need your smallest, uh, not smallest, but the next to the smallest one for your gears and uh, any of the uh, pulleys and stuff that you might need to take off. So here we go. Let's try to see how fast we can do this one. Uh, I know that I need to loosen these up because I want to take the belt off. Once I get these loose, I'll be able to remove the belt from this part here. Okay, so just pretty quick here. And once I get this belt loose, I'm going to go ahead and replace the pulley on um, this little piece here. Okay, so this is loose. Push it forward. Flip your assembly over. Now that you've got some slack in your belt, twist it a little bit and pull it off. Okay, now the belt's done. It can actually be removed at this point if you want. So um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this side of the belt so I don't damage anything. There we go. Now, again, as I mentioned before, you need to make sure that if you plan on going back and forth with this and taking your assembly off, please remember to go in here and bevel the edges so that you don't damage or cut your wheels. And you really need to make sure you get them right here because that's one of the worst parts that cuts. Now, this has already been beveled before, so I don't really have to do the other side, but I just want to show you what to do. One of the other issues that I had on this one is that there's actually uh, tool markings in here. If I slide this, it's right here. It's real rough and I have it on the other side also from whenever they were uh, holding this in some type of clamp to cut it. And because of that, um, my wheels make a little bumping sound. In fact, they're up here too. Right there's a big one. Uh, it's probably because they were trying to, you know, hold this down for the drilling for the precision. 
So um, since I've loosened up my wheels, I can just slide this off very gently. Now it's got to go over those little bumps, but those bumps don't cut my wheels. I'll show it to you from this side. So very gently, just push it off. Now, if you are not replacing your um, black wheels to these polycarbonate wheels, just leave everything like it is, uh, and we'll go over that in just a moment. Okay, so um, now that I've done that, I mentioned that we would go to this part first. Uh, let's go ahead and get our tools to remove this. I'm going to need my 7 millimeter to remove the small nut here. And take this off. I'm actually not going to take the screw completely out. Uh, for the essence of speed, I'm going to go ahead and keep one of these um, nylon spacer bushings or whatever you would like to call it in position. And all we're going to do is remove these cheaper quality bearings. All they do is take two of these and put them together and that's their uh, GT6 belt version of a don't slip off the edges bearing. So um, I'm, I am putting a GT6 20 tooth bearing, very inexpensive things, uh, on here. So I'll slip that one in. And uh, from past experience, I actually learned that it was a, a good idea for me to add one little four millimeter washer as a spacer. It just seemed to help keep the uh, white extrusion, uh, this part here, from uh, sliding back and forth a lot. And it's probably not critical, but I, I just liked it so I didn't over tighten things. And you know what? We're not going to worry about it. Let's just keep going. I wasn't trying to shotgun this video. I would have that little washer in there, but I can put that in there anytime. Okay, so I'm going to go and take this one. Now listen, when you put these on, do not over tighten this because all you're going to do is compress this. So right now, this easily slips over that. But as we start to tighten this down, we compress the little U-looking bent metal here to the point to where it doesn't want to slip on easy if you go too far. So just be careful because see right now I've gone too far. It doesn't want to go where it's supposed to. And even tight, I still have plenty of uh, rolling room here. Now if you see how much play that has, that's one of the reasons why I like putting that little washer in there. Okay, let me loosen that back up. Okay, let's keep going. So this part's done. Now the next thing we're going to do is work on the rear end of it and we're going to go ahead and pull off our motor and uh, we're going to replace this one with another one of these GT6 uh, 16 tooth uh, pulleys or um, idler bearings for a better word. And I'm also going to take this one off the motor too. Now there's a very inter interesting thing that's going to happen. When you start to um, put the new idler pulley here and tighten it down, what's going to happen is the pulley is going to stop rotating because they're using kind of like a, a threaded tube that's been tack welded or spot welded to this uh, motor bracket. And um, by removing the uh, original pulleys off and putting this here, by the time you tighten this up, the pulley will not rotate. So, or not the pulley, the uh, idler pulley will not rotate or wheel. Um, so what you have to do is take one of these off. Here we go. Unscrew. If you're, if you are actually replacing this, take this off, keep this aside, go ahead and, um, let's work on this for a second. Remove this one. This one actually doesn't take that long to do. Okay, unscrew it. Remove the two little bearings just like they were on the front. One, two. And so what you're going to then do, you have options here. You can drop a tool in here and take a black sharpie and you can actually mark uh, the spacing to know exactly where or how deep this is. Okay. And then what you can do is take your adjustable Allen and just run it in there as a stop. Now earlier I did an experiment by throwing some pieces of plastic inside here uh, and that actually worked. But in the same respect, they're probably still in there. So see, I really <laughs> need to get them out. 
Um, but in this case, I'm just going to try to keep going with this and let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm just going to squish those pieces down really well inside. And what's nice is they're acting like a good stopping break for this. Now you won't have to deal with this like I am. This is my mistake because I was trying to find a way to do this and then I realized that that actual um, the uh, pulley that I was taking off had the right size three millimeter um, type of Allen screw that you inset into things. So see now I've got too much space here, which is not bad because I have lots of options now. I can easily space this out with some washers. But before I do that and keep going, uh, Yep, actually, you know what? Let's just do it. Take this back off, and I will add some washers to this. Now, you will not have to do this again. This is just me, because I was experimenting to try to give you guys the best answers. And even though the other one worked, um, this is a better way of doing it. And the other thing is, is that you could have also just put a little bit of uh, Loctite on here, and set your screw in to the correct depth that you like or the tension to your pulley and then by merely doing that just let the um, Loctite actually dry and you're done. It's that easy. Um, and you wouldn't have needed this adjustable Allen that I put in here as a spacer or more like a set screw. Okay, let's roll that one off. Okay, trying to go fast here. And then as soon as I get this done, I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, 4 off of this NEMA 17 motor, and we're going to quickly add that mount to it. Now that's loose, yet I can go tight on that. There we go. Oops, we'll back up just a little because I really did snug that down. Okay, very happy with that one. Now, um, you also want to make sure that it's actually lining up in the holes. Okay, that's important too. So in this particular case, I really don't have a way to push it over uh, unless I could find a three millimeter washer and drill out the hole larger for this. But that's really not that easy to do at this point. So just trust me, I think this is going to do just fine. Now I'm going to take the um, other gear that I'm replacing here and we're going to go and put this on. Actually, you know what, I'll wait just a minute because I'm going to go ahead and replace the motor mount. So now we're going to do the motor mount. Undo your screws. Remember this is the second to the smallest Allen wrench from the kit they send you with Creality. Okay. And with this you're going to end up using um, only two of these original screws. The other ones are going to be too short. So take this uh, motor mount and let's go ahead and set this on. Now if you'll notice it has a smaller side and a larger hole side here. So this won't fit properly, so I have to do it like this. And uh, go ahead and set two of these down. Once I get these two there, um, pretty much I'm going to snug them in once I, I get them both uh, aligned. The biggest concern for me is I don't really like to snug everything until I've tested the other screws that are going to go in there. Because they, they also have to line up. Now, originally, you had these small ones here. I've had to go to a three, three millimeter by 20 millimeter here. So, um, and because these are threaded, I need to thread it down until it kind of finds the, about where the hole is. But not going in the hole, just about there. I just want to make sure I'm aligned. There. And now, I will take these two and tighten them down. Okay, and then I'm going to pull the 20 millimeter length one back out. I really don't like these wrenches, they strip too easy. Okay, so let's take this out. And now I'm just going to mount it back on the aluminum extrusion here. Okay, here we go. Run that down. And let's grab the other 20 that I had already pre-selected. Okay, here we go. And now we're going to lift up the beam a little bit to help this balance out. Uh, really shouldn't just 
do the screws and hope that the beam adjusts to it. You should always lift up your beam because that's a lot of torque that you're forcing on these heads. Uh, if the beam is uh, just sitting there and you expect it to lift up. Okay, that's good. Just checking for squareness on everything. Now, these little allens here do not give you any type of um, alignment issue as far as tension goes. They're only a vertical up and down adjustment. They are not uh, an adjustment for pulling back the belt tension. So keep that in mind. Now we will add the, um, the final uh, pulley, which is this one, which apparently I had borrowed one of these out of. So let me replace that here. There we go. Okay, now we want these to be slightly lined up. I'm only going to gently snug these to see how the belt fits. Okay, here we go. That's a little snug. And another one. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so there we go. Um, now this uh, is the bottom, which means that the belt is running, which way I always get this confused. It's gonna have to go through here and it's gonna have to be flipped around. I'll check that in a minute and it runs this way. Okay. And then this is in the wrong direction. There we go, straighten out. Sometimes it's a good idea just to reset this. Don't trust it. Which I'm getting ready to do. Okay, so that's flat, that's flat, that's good. All right, that's pulled through flat nicely. Okay, so put this back on the motor cog. Um, the other thing I need to do is go ahead and put this back on. And uh, this is my up position. I'm gonna lay this down. And then I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to gently push this on. It's so loose, I'm not really damaging anything this way. There we go. That was easy. Now that that's there, we're going to go ahead and add this piece, the tensioning part. And uh, remember, I put a little silver mark here and a silver mark here, so I wouldn't get those too confused. Go ahead and hook this back one on. There we go. That's good. Make sure it's pushed over enough. <clears throat> okay, now. Insert this in. Try to walk it into the little pulley. Get ready to push the pulleys back, I mean the um, T-nuts back in the extrusion. Once I get those in there, I will push the extrusion, I mean the uh, little bent channel piece, or whatever you want to call this, all the way back here. Now we're going to add our belt. Okay, belt's in good position. And now we add some tension here. Okay, now that part is done there. There's some of the stuff out. Now the easiest way to add tension to these is to go ahead and start lightly snugging down the rear ones first. And do the other side, of course. And now I get to uh, see how the front ones are going. And if I need to uh, kind of straighten them out some. There we go. I'm going to finger snug this one just to keep that little T-nut in the right position. That one is okay. Oops, it just flipped. I'll pick that there to hold it. Tell you these things are not fun to work with, but I guess they're better than nothing. Okay, so um, to add some tension to this belt, I'm going to take this large Allen, go in here, putting this tip against this part, and not, I don't really want to damage the, uh, any threaded parts here, so I'm just going to put it to the side here and push this back, and it's going to pull it forward. I don't know if you notice that, and then I'm going to add some snugging on the very back one only. I don't need to snug both of them right now. I just want to get one locked in to see how the belt is actually following uh, everything in the pulleys. Because this is how we align 
much of our um, belt wander. Okay, so now this one's, I haven't really messed with this one, but let's just see what happens here. That's not too bad because it's not shoving itself over hard against the belt, but I can adjust for that easily. So now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to do the same thing. Give a little push on it. Here we go. This one will tighten down. Quick check again. Well, at least nobody's fighting hard to get shoved over to one side or the other. Now you can play with this for an hour if you want and there will be a point where you'll get it really really nice. I need to check this back one too. I'm actually okay with that one. Make sure everything looks good. It's too loose. So we're going to have to do this part a little bit more. I noticed that whenever I first got this adjusted properly, the uh, T-nuts were almost practically jumping out of the extrusion. So the belt has stretched a bit. A little more center balance on this one. Try one more time and hopefully we've got this just about done. And good enough. All right, Let's see what we got this time. There, we're not wandering. And I'm actually okay with this because I swear I feel like these belts are just not really, really straight if you were to lay them out. Um, I am going to replace these later on with what I hope are a better quality belt. Um, I do have better tension now. Okay. Not too much, but uh, then again, not too little. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, just remember to put everything back in properly, you know, torque these down and, you know, torque these down nicely uh, or tighten them and uh, don't forget to tighten these up here. Uh, you can also give a little bit of a more tension by pulling this down and straightening it up. Okay, that'll make a little bit of a difference also. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm always glad to help. And I do have one other little quick tip. One of the things that I've done on this, and, and I'll go over this real fast, is Whenever I'm putting my centric nuts on there, I always take a Sharpie, preferably black, and I make X marks on the lowest side, uh, basically, that the wheel can be shoved away from the extrusion. So by doing that, every time I want to adjust this, I know that I've already got the least amount of pressure on the extrusion possible. And you'll see I've done that also over here. So by doing this, it allows me to first set everything on there gently without damaging anything. I can check the um, permanent wheels just to see how they're uh, not too tight. Then I can come in here and I can adjust the centric wheels. Now in this particular case I like to start with the middle one first and you can see it's moving in and as I'm doing this I'm still rotating this one. Okay now it's definitely grabbing. Grabbing and I can still spin the wheel, but it's, I have to really hold it still, to, uh, this one still to do it. Okay, that looks good. Let's try this one over here. We're almost done with this. Again, spinning the wheel and wait till it grabs and wants to move the extrusion. Spinning, spinning, spinning. There it goes. It's trying to move it now. Oh, there we go. Now let's see how this one is. That one's good. This one's good. And this one here, very loose. Spin, spin, spin. Tighten in that eccentric. Wait till it starts to try to move the whole assembly. And I can tell it's getting ready to do that. There we go. I can still spin this one. And I can spin that one, but that's tight, so we're going to back off a little bit. Oops, wrong way. Nope, that was the right way. There we go. That's better.
Okay, so by doing that, we really get rid of all the play in here. And another thing you can do real quick to check that is to get a piece of tin foil. Um, in my particular case, um, I usually like to just do the one piece method like this and just stick that down somewhere all the wheels can reach it. And what I want to do is see if this 0 0.015 shim acts like it's trying to stop the wheels. And if it does, then I've got to loosen up something. And in my case, I'm pretty happy with it. Yep, I could loosen this one up a little bit. See how easy this is? Not much. There we go. Nice. All right, so I've got my wheels tightened into a 0 0.015 tolerance. So I have uh, not too much pressure on the wheels. Everything works great. One last thing. I was having an issue uh, with this the first time I assembled it. And uh, I ended up putting a shim right here that was close to 0 0.07. And what I had to do was take a piece of aluminum foil and um, I had to actually cut it and fold it five times. Give me just one second. I actually dropped it on the floor. So by doing this, I already have this one ready to go. And um, if you'll notice, this is loose back here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and insert this shim just because it happened to work the last time. And push this back a little bit. I'm trying to pull the motor back. I have to loosen the one on the right some more underneath here. Give me a little space to pry it back. There, that's just enough. Okay, so I'm going to, with a little bit of force, I'm going to pull the motor kind of back and try to get this shim inside. There we go. Now remember, that is five folds of a standard, not a heavy duty, but a standard tin foil. And while I'm here, I get a chance to kind of look at everything and align it just a little bit better. Okay, and make sure everything's kind of square and not tilting at angles. All right, now I'm just going to snug this one a little bit because I, I just want to see if it made it better or worse. I have no complaints. Very happy with that. If I really wanted to, I could even take this pulley out a little bit just to make sure it's not rubbing too much on that one side. Now, every time I'm finished with something like this, I will go through and give one last check on all the uh, adjustments and allens and stuff just to make sure that I don't need to make any better adjustments. Okay, so let's move that just a smidgen. Oop, too much of a smidgen. Okay, had to run it back and forth a couple times, let it get used to it. Curious of how far it would try to to walk if I keep bringing it out. This one's always a mystery to me why it does this so badly. If I try to pull the motor back while it's there, oh, it just needs more shimming. But yeah, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just being a little overkill on this. So, um, anyways. I hope that helped you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Uh, hopefully you will like this and share it with your friends. And uh, please give me a thumbs up if you can. And subscribe. I have a lot of good tips to go through building this together. And uh, hopefully it will save you a lot of headaches like I've had to go through. Um, just because so many things from the factory really weren't that great. So again, this is Ken with 3D Mojo. Thank you and have a good day.